So this leads to the last challenge that we actually published recently a little bit about, uh, which is then, so suppose now that you solved all the basic ethical questions here, you decided how to balance the stakes and so on, and the pros and the cons of, for example, the screening for multidrug resistant infections in hospitals or something like that. You come up with an action and the effect of the action is actually exactly the one you aimed for, except that people defect. They won't collaborate. For example, they don't go to hospitals and they avoid hospitals. Or they lie on the form or something else. So your action won't actually ha deliver the good thing that you wanted it to deliver because of the way that people respond. And you can't say that people are stupid or evil because they respond as they do for good reason from their point of view in their context, as we saw before. So perspective, once again, is, is important and role is important. Okay, so then what we often do in politics is to say, okay, we have to explain to people why this is so important. So we don't only have the action, we also have a story that we tell about why this is so important. So do, this is rhetoric. The first is logic, the other is rhetoric, so to speak. And if you're lucky, the story will be accepted and people will take on the responsibility to follow the rules. In a lot of areas we do. We all understand traffic rules, even when there is nobody else on the rule road, we stop for the red light and wait. So this is the proof that we can actually function in that way. We're not only hopeless uh, individuals in that way. But you also run the risk that they actually won't like the story at all, and it may, may even increase the resistance to your policy. Here are you telling us what an important problem this is. Well, you come telling us this story when you fix this and this and this and this and this. Then we can get over to antibiotic resistance, make the trains run on time before we get to the next thing. This is a very common reaction when, when politicians tell stories about why their policies are so good. But this is a risk here. And then, of course, you can adapt your action so that it's less costly and less burdensome for individuals. So you don't have to fill in so many questions on the form. Or um, we don't have, if you have been abroad anyways, just certain target countries or something like that. But of course, the more that you adapt your action to the resistance, the less effective it will be to curb the problem that you're after. So a less effective screening of multidrug resistance in hospitals in this case. Example I take. So the original justification goes away when you buy yourself the acceptance of the policy. This is a classic problem in politics. And I think that there will be more about these kind of problems and how to solve them in practice in another lecture. But this is the basic structure of the problems, and it has to do with the fact that people value different things from different perspectives and upholding different kinds of roles. And that enough support is necessary to have effective policies. <clears throat> and the problem is, and of course, if you're a politician, you're controlling the state, you're controlling the police, you're controlling you know, the courts, you're for controlling the military at the end of the day. So of course you can force a policy on your population. Easier so if you're not a democracy. But the, the more you force the population, very, very likely the more resistance you will have. So instead of having the effective policy, you might end up with the total political blocking. So we have several examples of that. So you have a misguided policy and there's a scandal. And then nobody can talk about this kind of solution for 20 years. Everybody will say, you're an idiot. Didn't you hear about that other example when everything went to pieces? So in this case that we're using, 
So if you're pressing on with this screening on people in hospitals, it's very heavy combined with very heavy measures when you find a risk person and so on. There will be a revolution, basically. People won't participate at all, and, and you will never more be able to raise even a milder suggestion of a screening in order to map the resistance in a hospital. This is a well-known problem that you need to deal with in infectious disease management. So when you go in and try to contain an infection, if you go in too hard, you create more problem that you ha than you handle, actually. Both because you might harm people too much and infringe on their rights too much, overly brutal in that way, but it could also be that you create the people that people don't, if the infectious disease doctor comes and wants to talk to them, they say, no, go away, I won't talk to you. Well, what do you do then? Okay, you have to fetch the police, but if we're talking about hundreds and thousands of people, this is now becoming a major societal problem. It's really not the solution to go that way. So you need to have the acceptance of the measures that you take, enough of it in order for the policy to be possible to implement in an effective way and actually have what you aim for with the policy. So that's the end of my lecture, and I'm happy to take any questions or comments. Please.